talk of this afternoon will be by, uh, by Andres Koropecki. Uh, and he will speak on prime and rotation number on periodic points. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation. Uh, I will talk about uh, joint work with uh, Patrice Le Calvé and Maysam Nasiri. Uh, the, the results I'm going to talk about are uh, mainly topological. Uh, they, they concern uh, homeomorphisms of surfaces. Uh, but I will talk about some consequences in the, in the generic setting for, for area preserving uh, diffeomorphisms as, as well. So uh, the setting, uh, the basic problem that, uh, that we consider is uh, you take a, a, a homeomorphism of an orientable surf surface uh, and an open uh, invariant connected set. Uh, and what we would like to do is to, to somehow describe the dynamics in the boundary of this uh, open set. Uh, more specifically, we would like to, to characterize the existence of periodic points, to give some sort of crit criterion to, to, to the existence of periodic points, and also to, to see what are the topological restrictions that the dynamics in the boundary uh, impose on the, on the boundary itself. For instance, when you have no periodic points in the boundary, you probably can say something about the topology of the boundary of the, of the set. Uh, okay, so uh, the simplest setting where we can ask these questions is in the plane, so we, uh, we will start with this case. Uh, and we will consider, an, uh, to, for simplicity, a simply connected open set. Uh, we will also assume it uh, to be uh, bounded, for simplicity. So in this setting, we would like to give uh, a criterion for the existence of periodic points in the boundary of the set. Uh, so the, um, the ideal case would be when the, the, the open set, the closure of the open set is actually uh, a topological disk, so it's homeomorphic to a disk. In this case, the boundary would be a circle, and so we have a circle homeomorphism uh, in the boundary, and in this case, we have uh, completely classified the dynamic by uh, Poincaré's theory, and the key for that is the rotation number. We have uh, a theorem which says that uh, there is a periodic point in the boundary even only if uh, the rotation number is rational. So we have an invariant which characterizes the existence of periodic points in the boundary. So this, this would give uh, 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 an idea of how to proceed in the general case. The idea would be that uh, the boundary since uh, our simply connected open set is homomorphic to an open disk, we would expect that the boundary would somehow resemble a circle and we would try to do the same thing. The problem is that, of course, the boundary not always is a circle and it's not even close to being a circle. We can have a very complicated uh, topology in the boundary. These are uh, not the worst thing that can happen, but this illustrates the sort of things that you can have. For instance, in this first uh, picture, you have uh, many points which are not accessible from the open set. You can go with a continue, continuous path starting from the set and to a point uh, here in the, in the boundary circle. You can't reach it without accumulating in the whole circle. So this point is not accessible. And this would give the idea that m maybe the dynamics on this part of the boundary you can't, uh, can't be seen from the inside of the open set somehow. So uh, it, this would be a problem maybe. Uh, this is even worse because this is something that is not locally connected. It's nowhere locally connected and it, in, it can appear as the boundary of a simply connected uh, set. Uh, and you can have even worse things. For instance, uh, you can have the pseudo circle, which is something uh, is a hereditarily in the, in the composable continuum. Uh, this is something I can't draw, but it's, it's much worse than this because it's not locally connected anywhere, but it, it, it doesn't even contain any continuous arcs. So it's, it's really bad. Uh, and it, it appears as the boundary of open sets as well. Yeah. And in fact, these things appear uh, m frequently, uh, even when you consider differentiable dynamics or even holomorphic dynamics. These things are not uh, pathologies. They are not uh, rare. They, they really show up in a robust way. For instance, this thing here, uh, it's, you can see this appears as the closure of the, or as the stable foliation of a horseshoe, something like that. And this is robust when you, when you have yeah, a hyperbolic horse. So, okay, but, uh, so the question is, can we do something similar to the theory of Poincaré in this, uh, in this setting, even 
even if, if the boundary of our set is not a circle, can we define some kind of rotation number associated to the boundary? Uh, so an idea to do this uh, would be to try to compactify the open set in a different way, like uh, attaching a circle to the boundary instead of the, the boundary, the, the nasty boundary that we have. And uh, maybe uh, if we do this in a nice way, we get a, a closed disk, uh, which has an artificial boundary. And in this disk, if everything is nice, we maybe can extend uh, our dynamics. And then we can define the rotation number of associated to this open set as the rotation number in this artificial circle, the Poincaré rotation number in this circle. And of course, then we would have to show that this number has something to do with the dynamics, which is not obvious at all, because this is not this is artif an artificial construct. So this, this can be done. This was done, I think, the first time uh, it was done was by Cartwright and Littlewood when, in their proof of the, their fixed point theorem. And uh, the compactification I mentioned there is uh, the prime ends compactification. Uh, I, I have no time to explain uh, the details of, of this compactification, but it, uh, it satisfies, satisfies all these, these properties. And uh, so the, this rotation number defined in this way uh, is what we call the prime ends rotation number. So the question then is whether with this rotation number uh, really uh, has something to do with the existence or non-existence of periodic points in the boundary. And uh, the answer is no. I mean, uh, even, uh, you can have a rational rotation number and no periodic points in the boundary, and you can have uh, an irrational rotation number and fixed points in the boundary. This example here, uh, everything flows from one circle to the other. When you look at the prime ends compactification, you will see a fixed point, two fixed points. Uh, but uh, there are no fixed points, not, no periodic points in the boundary if you put an irrational rotation here and here. And in this example, which is a little bit more complicated, uh, you have an irrational rotation number in the prime ends, but this circle is made of, of uh, fixed points. Uh, but if you look uh, closely at these examples, uh, there is, they, they both have some kind of attractive behavior near the, in, in some places near the boundary. Uh, the, here, everything flows in one direction, so here you have dissipativity. And here, if you want to make this example in a way that it works, you really will have some kind of dissipativity as well here. So the question would be, okay, if we, if we assume that F preserves area, maybe the answer is positive to this question here. Maybe a rational rotation number implies in the existence of periodic points and vice versa. Uh, or even weaker, uh, we can assume that F is no wandering, has no wandering open set, which is weaker than area preserving. Maybe in this setting, uh, we can prove the theorem. Uh, Cartwright and Littlewood proved precisely this fact in one direction, uh, assuming that the, that the map is no wandering. They proved that if the rotation number is rational, then you have a periodic point in the boundary of the, of the set. And uh, there are many results uh, improving the, the result, but they all are in the same direction. If you have a rational rotation number, then you have a plus something, you have a periodic point. So the question that remains is what happens when you have a new rational rotation number? What can, uh, can you say that there are no periodic points? Uh, that is, uh, does the converse of this theorem hold? And well, this is our first result. It's precisely the converse. Under the same hypothesis, if you have an irrational rotation number, then you have no periodic points uh, in the boundary of the set. And when you have no periodic points, you also have, can say something about the topology of the set. You can say that the boundary is an annular continuum. This means that it is an, an intersection of a nested sequence of, of uh, annuli. Okay, but uh, this is for the plane. So. Uh, uh, the question is whether we can do this on any surface or there is something special about the plane. And the answer is almost yes. There is a small detail that we, we can make an example like this, uh, where you have uh, this, uh, this set here, this compact set, which is like a hedgehog. It has a fixed point and the hairs coming out of the fixed point and the hairs rotate in an irrational way. And you can look at the complement of this set and you have a simply connected set if you are on the sphere, uh, uh, which uh, you can show that uh, its boundary, the rotation number in the prime end on its boundary, is uh, irrational, but of course there is a fixed point here. 
So this is, but this is not really, I mean, this is a very particular example. This is almost like a planar example where you take some points in the boundary of the set and you make them collapse into one point. But uh, basically, you have the same thing. And you, you have only one fixed point and nothing else. So the second result is that basically this is the only, the only exception in the general case. When you take any surface, for, for the moment a closed surface, uh, orientable, and you take any uh, open invariant simply connected set, then you either have precisely the figure that I just showed, you have a, that there is a unique fixed point in the boundary of the set and no other periodic points, and moreover, this can only happen if the surface is the sphere and uh, if, the, if the complement of the open set is, is precisely uh, a non-separating continuum with empty interior. Uh, so you have this example, which is precisely the figure I showed, or you have that the boundary has no periodic points at all and it is an annular continuum, and it's an intersection of annuli, and moreover, it is contractible. So it, it, it can be deformed continuously to, to a point. So we have the dynamical information and the topological information about the boundary. So basically this is saying that either we have this figure here or we have a nice figure where, where the, the boundary of the open set uh, remains in a, a, in a region which doesn't uh, wrap around any handle in the surface. It's, it's really a pl like in the plane case, topologically. And there are no periodic points. So uh, in particular, this cannot happen. This is ruled, ruled out. You can't have, uh, if the rotation number is irrational, you can't have any, like, a tongue which yeah. spirals around in the surface. Uh, this this uh, result, uh, you can extend it to any surface, uh, not necessarily compact, just of finite type, and even even you, can, you really don't need finite type, uh, you just need uh, finite uh, genus. Uh, and also we can extend it using surgery, we can extend it to, to non-simply connected sets. You can study each connected component of the boundary, you can de describe it, uh, studying their prime ends rotation numbers, and uh, you can say something about the existence of periodic points and uh, the topology of these components. And also we can relax the, the hypothesis, the non-wandering hypothesis to a much weaker condition, which we call boundary non-wandering, but it has nothing to do with being non-wandering actually. In particular, this condition, it holds when you have a, a holomorphic map. For, uh, when you have a holomorphic uh, uh, diffeomorphism of, or local diffeomorphism, uh, you always have the boundary non-wandering condition, which I won't define. Uh, so, and so our result holds in this setting, and you can use it to obtain uh, topological proofs of some uh, results by Perez Marco and others. Uh, so this is one setting where you can uh, apply this, these things. But uh, I will, uh, in the area preserving, in the, in the, in the generic setting, uh, we can also give a, a result that doesn't uh, mention the prime ends at all. It is really a generic uh, result, uh, which is the following. If you have, you take any surface and you take a CR generic for any R, uh, one or more, uh, diffeomorphism uh, preserving area, and you take an open set connected, which has finitely many topological ends, you can think of this as having finitely many boundary components. This is just to avoid uh, things like uh, the whole surface minus a counter set. We don't want this kind of things. So for such a set, you can describe the boundary of the set. If it is invariant by a generic area preserving diffue, the, set, the boundary of the set has to be a disjoint union of annular continua without periodic points together with finitely many periodic uh, orbits. So this basically, uh, annular continua are relatively nice in that, I mean, the, they are a nested intersection of annuli. They have, you can define a homological direction for them. They, they are almost like circles. They could be non-locally connected, things like that, but uh, in some sense, they look like circles. So basically, this is saying that if you take a, an open set which is invariant by a, by a generic area-preserving diffue, then it looks like a surface with boundary. 
the, the periodic orbits would be the punctures in the surface, and the annular continua, which are periodic also, would be the boundary circles. And uh, a special case where this result is, uh, is, is nicer is when you consider complementary domains. Uh, for instance, complementary domain is just the connected component of the complement of a connected compact set, which is not a point. So for instance, uh, take uh, the stable manifold of a fixed point, take its closure, and take a connected component of its complement. This would be a complementary domain. If you are area preserving, then these complementary domains are always uh, periodic if the, if the compact set is invariant. And what we can say is that if you have a generic diffio, still area preserving, and a periodic complementary domain, then there are no periodic points at all in the boundary, and it is a disjoint union of annular, a periodic annular continuum. Uh, this result, uh, so this is saying that, for instance, in particular, if you take the stable manifold and the, of a fixed point, periodic point, you take the closure, take a connected component of the complement, there are no periodic points in its boundary. Uh, this was, I mean, there is a previous result by Matter, uh, which is, which holds for large values of R, large regularity, because it, use, uh, it, it uses CAM theory. Uh, but uh, this, this result only uh, said that for a generic diffio, if you look at the prime men's rotation number associated to each boundary component of the open set, it would be irrational. But it didn't say anything about the dynamics itself. So uh, the, the theorems I mentioned before allow to make the connection with the dynamic, dynamics. Also, well, this, we, we prove this in the, for any R because we don't use any CAM uh, results. Uh, if you, in the case of the sphere and the torus, this result uh, was, uh, it was known. I mean, it is a consequence of the result of matter and the results of Pigston and Oliveira about uh, the existence of homoclinic intersections. Uh, but these results are not known uh, for higher genus surfaces, so the proof using uh, homoclinic intersections doesn't work, uh, at least for the moment. Uh, so, uh, but we, we really don't use anything about homoclinic intersections here, so our proof works in any uh, genus. Uh, and also the generic condition that we have in, in this theorem and the previous one, it is explicit. It's just uh, a Kupka's mail, the hyper hyperbolicity and, uh, of, of periodic points and non uh, hyperbolic points. Sorry. All periodic points are hyperbolic or elliptic and uh, a weak condition on the elliptic uh, points. Uh, and uh, in particular, this result allows to, to, to complete the proof of, of this theorem, uh, which is the generic uh, density of stable and unstable manifolds of periodic points. If you take a generic diffio, area preserving, uh, if you take the, the set of stable manifolds of all periodic points, this is a dense set. The union of all stable manifolds is dense. Also, the unstable manifolds. This was known. In the case of the sphere, uh, the, the proof is due to Franks and Le Calvé, and uh, it was for large irregularity, and it used the Pigston theorem and Matter's result. Uh, for higher genus, there is an article of Shia where he proves this theorem, but it actually uses this result here, and uh, which was not proven. Uh, it, uh, it is. Uh, attributed to matter, but matter really didn't prove this, so this, <laughs> this result actually completes the proof. And, uh, well, that is all.